In my mind, there's not another creature on the planet that defines wilderness like wolves. They can be social, they can be loners. They're extremely good at what they do. They're the top predator in their environments. You often have this alpha pair of a male and a female, and they will pair up together, sort of like the king and the queen of their domain. The pack is healthy, and they defend their territory, and they raise their young, and they find their food, and it's amazing. There's the emotional connection and the spirituality that comes along with understanding wolves in their natural environment. And that's why I want to be with people in these places, to help them with that experience. Just lift up a little bit. Okay. They're in there. As a guide, I get to go out on conservation-focused trips all over the world. I'm really fortunate to be able to introduce people to these places. I see discoveries in a really meaningful way. I grew up running around in the mountains, so they inherently just feel like a special place to me. My dad and my mom were very influential in taking me outdoors all the time. Whether we were out on the water or up a mountain or just camping in the forest, we were out doing those things together. My dad he had a very strong ethic when it came to the outdoors. He would literally get on his hands and knees and crawl around and stalk animals and spend months getting to know their patterns. He would always teach this idea of reverence to me and my brother. Don't carve your name into a tree. Think about the tree. I developed a great love for being outside. I went into school for environmental sciences because I wanted to spend all my time outdoors. And then I got hired by a consulting firm and quickly realized that I was being issued a cubicle and that I was doing computer work. And I left. I went straight to the Appalachian Trail. And somewhere out there, I decided to be a guide because I thought that was a pretty cool thing to be able to make that connection for people, to try to tell stories of these places and teach people all about the wilderness. So look at all these trees. And they're all worn away. Generations of bison rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. If you want to, you can walk over. It's essential to his life. I think it's, you know, food, water, and wilderness. I wouldn't even say shelter. He'd be fine out there <laughs> with, like, a tarp. I need the calm. I need to get out and have personal conversations with people. When you pass people on the trail and you say hello, and maybe stop and talk about your experiences coming from either direction. Those things just don't happen in the cities. Everything's fast paced and it's moving all the time. But outdoors, everybody's friends. A lot of guides are very A-type kind of social drivers. I'm not the extroverted type at all. It's a little more intimidating for me to just sort of make small talk and meet people that I don't know. But then once I'm physically outside, that changes. So guiding, it's often easy for me to get up in front of people and share these places and share these experiences and kind of bring them into my little version of the world. We just saw 20% of the wolves that are in the park this morning. And it's, that was pretty amazing. Maybe one idea in, in understanding you know, the wolves is maybe understanding more about ourselves as well. It's, there's so much more to the wolves, right? The stuff that we're scared of is a small part of their life. And while some things might be scary, sometimes those scary things are just unknowns. And when you dive in a little bit more and you get to know those things, they become less scary. Wolves are so charismatic. We can learn a lot about ourselves by watching them. 
They live in these intricate little communities. Fight with another pack or there's another wolf that's not behaving and they gotta figure it out, you know, and they do. But wolves don't live that long. After a while, you watch one of them pass away, maybe even getting shot outside of the park. And that's really hard. You've seen them through these challenges and these ups and downs, and suddenly they're not there anymore. But we can also, by watching them, realize that they're in these wild places and that these places are worth protecting. He's taught me so much about wilderness and why we love it and why we want to protect it. And I, I have adventured my whole life outside. A lot of that is for my sanity. I need to go for a trail run because I need to clear my head. But Colby goes out there for, for a different reason. He's not training for anything. He just goes out because he loves it. He loves sharing. He loves teaching people. When I'm out there guiding with people, you give them a little bit of this and you give them a little bit of that. And then you get them into one place where everything comes together and a little light bulb goes off. And then they're talking about ecology and they're talking about conservation all on their own. And then when people leave, they become ambassadors for these places. And I don't take that lightly. When I chose to leave the environmental consulting realm, my dad was a little upset. He and my mom worked their whole lives to get me into college. And then I got a really good job and everything was going the right way. And then I quit and was like, wait, what was all that for? But he also instilled in me exactly what I needed to not look back. Growing up, I got to hear all about pressure that he got from people that were in his life telling him, this is what you're supposed to do. He always hated that. After my first year of guiding, he passed away, and so he hasn't seen my career progress. But being able to connect people to these places, that's what he did for me. So I think he would be, I hope, impressed, proud. Turn away this way for a minute. Let me get a picture of all the snowshoers. The granddaddy out here, Helheim, where most of these monsters are coming from. If you were here in the spring and through most of the summertime, you would not be able to access this because the whole thing that we're walking on right now is a giant river. Which one's yours? Anything I can see with my glasses. Which is what? Which are... <laughs> this one. And this one. Yeah, yeah, this one. <laughs> As a guide now, it's been 16 years, and I find that most of the strong personal connections I've made with people in my life happened in the outdoors. It's a good place to spend time with the people that you love. We share that together and we get to carry that on. There's a legacy of that trip. I have those kind of wonderful experiences with guests all the time. And then they go home and I go home and I get a new group of people. But they're stories, they're not shared experiences anymore. Being able to relive experiences with the people in your life that you shared together is the best of both worlds. Sarah and I both work for a travel company. She organizes trips and plans them to a T. But when we go out, we often just run around by the seat of our pants. We can go right 15 minutes and that takes us to a little town that he highly recommends. It's really beautiful. Let's do both. Well, if we're supposed to go left, but we feel like we want to go right, then we do. Let's go left. Okay. Traveling with Sarah is great because you have that sense of discovery, but you're now doing it with someone that's really close to you. Those memories and those places and that time together, that's what you remember in life. You remember, oh, that adventure where we took this random road and we found this secret cave. It's 
about the adventure and the fun and the spontaneity and waking up next to Colby in a tent. <laughs> That's the best. I think having access to the outdoors is just inherently good for people. I'm really fortunate that my parents took me out into the wilderness when I was young. They knew what the wilderness was all about. They knew how special it was. We went there because that was, that was a good place to go. It's a good place to spend time with the people that you love. In my mind or my heart of hearts, I think what I do is connect people to the natural world. When all else is stripped away from our society, we still have the basic needs of the wolves and the wolf packs. They have a strong community around them, and that's what's most important. <laughs>